I would like to thank the pediatric department and the organizing committee for inviting me to give this lecture as a collaboration between the pediatric dermatology and the pediatric department. <coughs> My lecture will be on atopic dermatitis. I benefited a lot from the previous lecture. It was amazing. Uh, as I have seen yesterday in my own clinic, allergy from methylprednisolone injections. And I was astonished, but uh, not really. As I know that steroids can cause uh, allergic reactions, but I've seen it with my own eyes. Uh, so I was very happy to hear it today to confirm my speculations. <coughs> Atopic dermatitis is the most common inflammatory skin disease. It presents a major public health problem due to increased prevalence. It is often accompanied by other atopic disorders like asthma, food allergies, and allergic rhinoconjunctivitis. These conditions may appear simultaneously or develop in succession. The characteristic age dependent sequence of atopic disorders is called the atopic march, in which atopic dermatitis and food allergy occur early in infants and young children, while asthma favors older children and rhinoconjunctivitis affects them. It is very important that we manage early the acute flares of atopic dermatitis and to prevent the active dermatitis by continuous maintenance therapy. Why? Because this could block the sensitizations and the ongoing inflammation which drive the atopic march. We control atopic dermatitis and further development of asthma, food allergy and conjunctivitis. This is an illustration of the atopic march. Atopic dermatitis is prevalent in 10 to 20 percent of children. It usually affects urban areas and high socioeconomic level areas more than the rural areas. There are three subsets of atopic dermatitis based on the age of onset. There is the early onset type, which begins during the first two years of life. The late onset type, which starts after puberty, and the senile onset type, which develops after 60 years of age. <clears throat> the early onset type is our concern. <clears throat> it is the most common type of atopic dermatitis, which develops before five years of age in about 85% of children. 60% of infants and young children with atopic dermatitis go into remission by the age of 12. And about 50% of children with early onset atopic dermatitis develop allergen-specific IgE antibodies by the age of two years. What's the pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis? Several factors play a role. Genetic factors, the epidermal barrier dysfunction, immune dysregulation, as well as alteration of the microbiome, whether cutaneous or GIT. As regards genetic factor, atopic dermatitis is considered a complex genetic disease in which it accounts for 90% of susceptibility in cases of early onset atopic dermatitis. There is high concordance rate of, for the occurrence of atopic dermatitis in monozygotic twins, up to 77%, and the presence of a parental history of atopic dermatitis is a strong risk factor for the development of atopic dermatitis in the curse. What about the epidermal barrier dysfunction? It is a consistent feature which is evident in both lesional and non-lesional skin of atopic dermatitis patients. There are several factors which contribute to the impaired cutaneous factors. Most important is the filigree mutation, 
which leads to increase in the transepidermal water loss and thus xeroses and barrier disruption. Also, it leads to elevated pH and defects in the lipid formation. The second factor is defect in the stratum conium lipid organization and processing, which occurs through several factors. Also, the unrestrained protease activity and the increased proteolysis, which occurred due to the imbalance between the proteases and their inhibitors, and also they occur due to elevated pH, which is an important feature in atopic dermatitis patients, and the presence of exogenous proteases from uh, colonizing staph organisms and the molasses. These all factors will lead to disruption of the epidermal barrier, degradation of the lipid processing enzymes, and degradation of the antimicrobial peptides, and activation of the pro-inflammatory cytokines. So the epidermal barrier dysfunction, if it occurs, it permits an easier entry for irritants and allergens into the skin, and also it permits entry of the microbes, which all trigger immune responses, leading to the release of the pro-inflammatory cytokines and the cytokines leading to acute and chronic atopic dermatitis. The third factor in the pathogenesis is the immune dysregulation, which includes both the innate and the adaptive immune systems, which are stimulated by a keratinocyte-derived cytokines, by keratinocyte-derived cytokines, most important of which is the TSLP, the thymic stromal lympho lymphopoietin. The acute phase atopic dermatitis features mainly the T helper 2 cytokines, interleukin 4, 13, and 31 mainly. Also, it features activation of eosinophils, mast cells, and production of allergen-specific IgE antibodies. While in chronic lesions, T helper 1 and T helper 22 predominate, T helper 17 occur, uh, T helper 17 cytokines occur in both acute and chronic cases of atopic dermatitis, and the in interleukin 31 is responsible for price. Why do I mention these interleukins? And these factors uh, marked in red because newly developed biologics attack these interleukins, which are the new uh, treatment modalities for the atopic dermatitis. Lastly, the cutaneous microbiome. Uh, the combination of the epidermal barrier dysfunction and the immune dysregulation together with elevated pH favor pathogenic bacterial colonization. It has been found that atopic dermatitis skin harbors elevated levels of Staph aureus, and that there is decreased microbial diversity in the skin of atopic patients. This decreased microbial diversity is usually inversely correlated with the severity of atopic dermatitis. It was found that in severe cases of atopic dermatitis, there is elevated levels of staph aureus, and in less severe disease, the staph epidermidis plays an important role. Not only the cutaneous microbiome, but also the intestinal microbiomes may affect the pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis. It has been found that infants with IgE-associated atopic dermatitis have decreased bifidobacterial species and low microfloral diversity early in life, which may play a role in the development of atopic dermatitis. This is a figure which shows the several pathogenetic factors playing a role in atopic dermatitis. What are the clinical features of atopic dermatitis? It has a broad spectrum of clinical features depending on the age. The infantile atopic dermatitis affecting age below two years, childhood atopic dermatitis from two to 10 years, the adult above 12 years, senile above six years. In all stages and in all 
types of the lesions are either acute, subacute, or chronic. And in all cases of atopic dermatitis, pruritis is a cardinal symptom. Uh, this is infantile atopic dermatitis below two years of age, which mainly affects special areas, especially the cheeks, the forehead, and the extensors. And they have to spare the axillary and the groin. Also, this is an infant with atopic dermatitis of the cheeks and the extensors. This in the childhood phase from 2 to 12 years, mainly the flexures are affected beside other areas. Also the flexures, other areas could be affected as the extensors of the feet and the hands. Also the same features. There are some regional variants of atopic dermatitis beside the classical picture in the form of dry lips and chelitis, nipple eczema, prurigo nodules on the trunk, areas of discoid eczema on the extensors, periorbital and periauricular dermatitic lesions, juvenile plantar dermatosis in the form of erythema, fissuring of the soles, and hand eczema, dyshydrotic eczema, and the last is the frictional lichenoid dermatitis in the form of papules in the frictional areas, especially in children exposed to playing with the dust outside. There are some associated features of atopic dermatitis like <coughs> the Dennis Morgan folds in the lower eyelids, periorbital darkening, the keratosis pilaris, which are the prominent follicular openings. Xerotic skin is a very important feature. The presence of ichthyosis vulgaris due to filigrane mutation. Central facial pallor. Areas of pterizis alba, which are white, dry, scaly areas, especially on the cheeks. And palmer and plantar hyperlinearity. These features aid in the diagnosis. So what are the diagnostic criteria of atopic dermatitis, which are the revised criteria of Hannifin and Rijka? Atopic dermatitis is characterized by essential features which must be present and alone are sufficient to diagnose atopic dermatitis. And important features which are seen in most cases and they support the diagnosis and associated features which are suggestive of the diagnosis but less specific. What are the essential features? The most important is the pruritis and the presence of the typical eczematous morphology and the age-specific distribution patterns which I have mentioned. And for, children, for infants, mainly the face, the extensors, while in children, mainly the flexures. And in all, there is sparing of the groin and the axil. And the disease should have a chronic or relapsing course. These are the essential features. The important features which support the diagnosis, the early onset of the disease, the presence of a personal or family history of atopy and the xerotic skin. While the associated features, the rest of the features which I have mentioned before, in addition to a typical vascular response, which is the white dermographism due to vascular constriction and the presence of ocular findings like recurrent conjunctivitis, anterior subcapsular cataract, and periorbital changes. What are the complications of atopic dermatitis? Most important is the impairment in the quality of life. These Children and infants have sleep disturbances, psychological distress, social isolation, and impaired functioning at school and work later on. Also, they could be complicated by infections, especially bacterial, the staph aureus, and viral infection like eczema herpeticum, which is generalized herpes simplex viral infection of the body in those adopted children and infants. 
could be affected also by herpetic keratoconjunctivitis and meningeal encephalitis, and they could be affected by widespread molluscal contagious. Also, ocular complications are common, like keratoconjunctivitis, keratoconus, subcapsular cataract, up to retinal detach. The differential diagnosis each, yani, is mainly of our concern as dermatologists. Uh, different uh, inflammatory diseases like seborrheic dermatitis and psoriasis, infestations could simulate atopic dermatitis like scabies, dermatophytosis, and impetigo. Some primary immune deficiencies could present with lesions similar to atopic dermatitis, especially the Omens syndrome and the hyper IgE syndrome. Langerhans like cell histiocytosis in those who are not professional could simulate atopic dermatitis. Some metabolic and genetic disorders, especially prolidase deficiency, acrodermatitis enteropathica, uh, biotin and essential fatty acid deficiency, and rarely dermatomyositis could simulate atopic dermatitis. Management of atopic dermatitis is very crucial and very important early management and the prevention of acute flares because they prevent the atopic march. First of all is education of the patients and the parents about the nature of the, of the disease and how to prevent it and how to uh, maintain remission. Gentle skin care is important by the use of non-soap cleansers and frequent moisturizers, especially the non-perfumed ones, plus anti-inflammatory therapy to control subclinical inflammation as well as other flares. The mainstay of atopic dermatitis is topical treatment. We try as much as possible to avoid systemic therapy. Topical treatment applied properly is enough to control the disease, but the patient should be educated and the family should be educated. If the disease is very severe and does not respond to topical treatment alone, we can add some phototherapy or systemic medications with continuing the topical therapy. We should identify the exacerbating factors and avoid them as much as possible. The identification is not easy. It needs uh, intelligent parents. It needs note taking every day to uh, identify these factors. The tests alone are not enough. This is the therapeutic ladder for atopic dermatitis including moisturizers, topical corticosteroids, we can use also topical calcium urine inhibitors, either together or in alternation, yani look at that three days and this three days. We can use narrowband ultraviolet, we can use dupilumab, which is, these medications are only used in severe cases. These are new biologics directed against interleukin-5 and interleukin-13, cyclosporin as an immune suppressant, only in short uh, periods. Sometimes we may use azacyprine, which is rarely used, mycophenolate moftil, also rarely used, methotrexate, rarely used. Systemic corticosteroids are mentioned, but they are not preferred at all because they induce rapid remission and rapid rebound. And every time we use corticosteroids, the remission is rapid, but the rebound is more severe. That's why we try to avoid them as much as possible. Also, we can use the omadizumab, which is <coughs> anti-IgE monoclonal antibody, and the nemolizumab, which is anti interleukin 31, which prevents severe prurites. This is what I was saying. The use of oral corticosteroids induce rapid remission, but rapid rebound. Again, if we use it again, remission will occur rapidly, but the rebound is small, and so on. 
That's why we have to avoid the systemic corticosteroids. On the other side, if you use topical corticosteroids, remission will be slow, but it will, it will be sure and remains for us. We use again corticosteroid remission and more remission time, less rebound and so on. That's why the topical corticosteroids is the mainstay of treatment. What are the triggers of atopic dermatitis? Most important is the extremes of temperature, very high temperature and very low temperature. Also the low humidity, that's why we have to use the humidifiers in dry weather. Irritants like wool, rough fabric, excess perspiration during the summertime, the use of detergents and solvents in washing. Infections, precipitate atopic dermatitis, like staph aureus, mollusca contagiosa. Also, systemic infection may precipitate atopic dermatitis, like upper respiratory tract infection. Environmental allergies could occur due to dust mites, pollens, and contact allergies. Food allergies, they trigger atopic dermatitis in a small minority of patients. The common allergens could be egg, milk, peanuts, nuts, shellfish, soy, and wheat. We have to put in mind, again, as uh, the dear professor said, detection of allergen-specific IgE via the blood or the skin prick test does not mean that allergy is triggering the patient's atopic dermatitis. Observation, then observation, then observation. And we confirm by these tests but we don't diagnose by these tests alone. And the people who are not going to be able to do this, we are going to be able to do this, we are going to be able to do this. So, we are going to be able to do this. So, in conclusion, a topic dermatitis is a common inflammatory skin condition which typically begins during infancy or early childhood, it is often associated with other atopic disorders. It's considered a complex genetic disease with environmental influences, characterized by intense pruritus and chronic relapsing course. Uh, acute inflammation and involvement of the cheeks, skull, and extensor aspects of the extremities occur in infants while uh, it shifts to chronic inflammation with lichenification and predisposition to flexure signs in, children's, in children and adults. It is associated with predisposition to skin infection. A proactive approach to management is recommended, including avoidance of the triggering factors, regular use of emollients and anti-inflammatory therapy to control subclinical inflammation as well as other flares, again, to stop the atopic march. Recent targeted immunomodulatory therapy is available for more severe disease. <laughs>